Hi everyone, Matt here, and today we are continuing on with Hive Swap Friends Sim. When we last left off, we had finished Volume 9, and now we are starting off with Volume 10. Far away lands and nearby pals. You've been lucky enough to acquire a bounty of friendships since you've arrived on since you arrived on this planet. But there's still an emptiness nestled right in the crook of your heart's atria. Maybe making one more friend will fix it. Maybe this next one will expand inside your chest like a sponge in a bath. Pushing out all your sadness, loneliness, and insecurity. After all, number 20 is the charm. Zebedee Tong Iva or Tagiri Caliber. Let's go with this guy. Zebedee. Ignite your buzz with a Simon. Wait, no. Your palm husk is vibrating in your pocket. One of your friends is contacting you. You pull it out and a notification pops up. ZZZ buzzing. ZZZ is requesting to add you on Chitter. The message is accompanied by a little icon. Blue with a silhouetted ring winged animal. Some of the similarities between this planet and your own are starting to stretch your powers of belief and coincidence. Whatever. Pull up the app and read the messages from, could it be, your potential new friend. Oh, gee, hi. Hope it's okay to contact you. Oops, I should introduce myself. <laughs> I saw your picture on Serva's stream. I'm one of their biggest fans, but now I'm one of yours. Love th those looks. Anyway, I'd love to chat if you're open to it. If not, it's okay, you can just ignore me, haha. <laughs> Everyone else does. May this be the universe reaching benevolently down to do you a solid? It's like being given a giant pile of money unasked. You didn't have to do anything for this friendship. You didn't even have to walk anywhere. All you had to do was join the fabled social media, and it literally appeared in your pocket. Your hands are shaking a little as you go to respond. You don't want to seem too eager, or do you? You have no idea how to approach this. You think, Z Z Z buzzing Z Z Z for his compliments, and say that you would be happy to talk sometime. In an instant, a notification pops up inviting you to download another app. You do it, and a video screen opens. Suddenly, you see your new friend's face. He is sweetly round and roly-poly, and smiling at you broadly. Hi, I'm Zibidee. I hope it's not too sudden to gripe you like this. Is it okay? Oh, gee, you don't have to respond to that. Sorry for being weird. Let's start over. <laughs> do you, how do you know Sirva? Sirva. Uh, apart from being extremely friendly, this troll also seems to run both sides of the conversation by himself. Frank him is the least effort you've ever put into anything. His enthusiasm is really cute, but there's something about him that unsettles you. Looking at his helpful face gives you a dark stab of humiliation you don't quite understand. Swallow down the discomfort and tell him the story of your friendship with Sirva. Leaving out Sirva's personal background, hangs on your every word. That's so cool. I wish I could hang out with you guys. OMG, not that I'm implying you'd want to hang out. It's just no one ever comes to visit me. Takes out his phone and taps a few keys. A notification box pops up in front of the video. It's a direct message from ZZZ buzzing ZZZ that just says, hmm. You ask him why that is. I live in the middle of nowhere. It's good for the bees, but I guess no one really thinks it's worth the effort to come all the way out here. It's just me and my Lucis, and he can't really do much around the hive. <sighs> it's fine. He really says the word sigh out loud. Despite saying it was fine, he seems dejected, with a distant downward angle to his shoulders. Sorry, his shoulders. His buzzy accent is kind of getting to you. 
ask him more about where he lives. You say it must be nice to live in the countryside. You mentioned that you did get to see some of the rural, royal, rural, royal, 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 alternian, alternia, when you met Skyla, and it seemed beautiful. Zebedee's face twists into a grimace. Yeah, I guess. Sensing this is a moment for sympathy, you tell him it, you're sure his friends would come visit if they were able to make the trek. Sure. Sounds like you did visit another troll that lives in the countryside, though. So I guess you thought she was cooler than me. That's like... It's whatever. I don't need my friends to pick me first. Struggle for words. You want to reassure him, but you also don't know him that well yet. Weakly protests that you didn't mean to say Skyla was cooler than him. You didn't even know him then. Maybe you'll be able to visit him in the future, too. Yeah, maybe. I've heard that before. He's not rejecting you, but you get the sense that a wall has been raised. You're sure you're sure you're going to keep chatting with Zebedee from time to time, but you get the sense you're never going to become a true friend. You're stuck in acquaintanceship limbo. Looks like you failed to earn his trust. Oh, that stings. Damn. Ask him if it's really fine. You tell him that you would understand if he's not okay with it. After all, you say, it would really hurt your feelings if a f blah, blah, blah. it would really hurt your feelings if friends didn't make any effort for you. Isn't that what friends are supposed to do? He gives you a grateful smile, some tension releasing from his frame. Oh, I would never ask that of anyone. Don't want to be annoying. Like, sometimes I really wish someone would ri would take the time to visit. I totally don't blame any of my friends for not coming. Like, I understand that you have to decide which friends come first. And I just don't. Some people are just cooler and more fun than me. It's understandable. This really must be your lucky day. First of all, no one has threatened bodily violence towards you in the past ten minutes. Your fear for your life is at a low-key, reasonable level. Second, this troll is making it really obvious what he wants you to do. This this is a total slam dunk of friend... ...portunity. Seeing all the... Thebity's face transforms utterly. It's astonishing. He goes from sullen and shadow to utterly radiant. Heart pangs with an overwhelming surge of fellow feeling. True. You've seen other trolls react emotion, emotive, emotively at the sight of meat and blood and your own body sparkling under the moonlight, but Zebedee is the only one with such an extreme reaction to friendship. Man, you are really feeling this little guy. Well, come. Really? That's so cool. Thanks. This is going to be so good. I'm going to get all the best snacks and my loose is, is really cool. You'll like him. This is so exciting. You leave Zebedee to his preparations. Even as the bubble of joy inside you goes a little wobbly. You aren't used to having such high expectations from prospective friends. Mostly people just expect you to be an imbecile. You absolutely can't screw this up. You made a promise to your brand new friend. Fortunately, that promise is to visit him in a house that is, by his own admission, so far away that not even people who know what the fuck is going on can be assessed asked asked to find it asked <laughs> you haven't thought this through but that's never stopped you before first things first what old friendships can you call on to help you out i.e. who is likely to have a vehicle of some kind you would you could always tag, you could always call up Tagora to see what he thinks, but you don't want to be too needy with him. Missia, well, doesn't look tall enough to reach the pedals. Zebra, just no. You are a strong, independent alien who doesn't need no troll. You also don't think aliens are allowed on public transits, and you don't know the number for troll taxis. So you'll do crime. Perfect. Hmm. What did Canal do when she stole the car? Punched the lock off with one big fist. He won't be punching off any doors, 
But eventually, you find a car that isn't locked. Almost like someone helpfully left it for you. Ha, <laughs> sucker. It pricks slightly at your consci conscience. Conscience? Bleh. As you slide into the seat and fire off the autopilot, hanging out into the country once again. But recently, anything that isn't brutal and discriminate and violence kind of doesn't faze you. So you stole a car. Big deal. It's not like anyone died. This is it. So it begins your gradual slide into a total moral in iniquity. Hard and criminal. That's you. Zivity does live pr pretty far out. He hadn't been exaggerating. You use the time to curl up into the back seat and catch up on some sleep. All the while trying to ignore the fact that the car reminds you of being inside a large, squishy animal. At least you get a few radio channels out here. Zippity's hive is big and buzzing. Literally, you hear a persistent drone of bees and sing right outside is the boy himself. He's so excited as he's bouncing on his toes, clapping his hands together. He has a gold symbol on his shirt. You wonder if he's a psychic. You've finally been here long enough to pick up on racial stereotypes. Go you! You're here! You actually came! I can't believe that someone actually went out of their way to visit me. Well, you don't really have a way to... Uh, ha you don't really have a way to go out of, but you keep them to yourself. You are more than happy to accept the friendship points. Zebedee leads you into his hive, which, like Skyless, looks like he made a lot of it himself. There are hanging baskets of flowers and plants everywhere, and a zigzag shelf holding up a stack of colorful books. The colorful, colorful books. In one corner is a big screen TV and an entertainment center. Zebedee vanishes into another room, which leaves you to get comfortable on the big couch, which is unsub subtly striped yellow and black. The buzzing is pretty loud in here, too. And you look around for bees. You're not thrilled about bees, honestly. You wish there was some music on your phone to drown them out. You're thinking about following Zebedee and seeing if he needs help. When your phone starts to vibrate, you look down and recognize Silverbuzz's username. Let's let it go to voicemail. You decide to let the call go to voicemail. You're busy with a different friend right now. And you just call them back on your drive home. Or, not home, but... The closest thing you've got right now. I'll give you something to do besides sleep. You mess around on your phone for a little bit, filling out your profile on your chitter. Alien invasion of one, just here, I guess. That's honestly the best you can come up with. You aren't sure how old your age would translate to troll years. Sweeps? They don't bother with that. You've already gained some more followers. Serve a retreat your intro tweet. Tweet. Or chirp. Whatever. Zebedee comes back into a tray in with a tray of snacks with a tray of Lola with a tray of snacks and two glasses of something bright red that you hope isn't Fago or blood. That goes without saying at this point. Hey, wh who were you talking to? I heard your palm husk go off. You tell him you weren't talking to anybody. You let the call go to voicemail. Does it really think you're the kind of person who would take a call from someone else while you're having a hangout sesh? Heck no. Aw, oh, you didn't have to do that. Zebedee says that, but he's obviously incredibly happy that you did. He sets the tray down and hops up on the couch next to you. So, what do you want to do? I have a bunch of really cool stuff we could check out. I didn't want to make you do... I didn't want to make you just do whatever I wanted. I know we barely know each other. Haha. <laughs> Tell him that whatever he wants to do is fine with you. You aren't picky in any sense of the word. Zebedee seems a little, little at sea by your lack of opinion, but eventually he puts on the first episode of a pirate show. This is nice. It's nice to just chill for a little while. But you barely get through the opening credits before Zebedee changes his mind and puts on a show about, a space, about space pirates instead. But then he gives up on that too. He keeps looking at you for input, but the extent of your ex experience with troll pop culture is Romelli's knockoff. Offs and that one shade romance flick Polypod took you to see. You are not informed enough to have an opinion. You are seriously down for whatever. Zebedee does the same thing with video games for a while, becoming increasingly more distressed. 
feel deep empathy at his plight, but also mild annoyance. You understand the unreasonable fear of beefing it in front of your friends. You feel that like that pretty much all the time. Ugh. He eventually suggests to Zebedee you could that you could wa just watch the last thing he watched on GrubTube. Zebedee gives a delicate gray color that you've come to realize is a patrol version of a Blanche. Uh, that's... Uh, <laughs> yeah, we could do that for sure, but, you know, a guy's GrubTube queue is, you know, kind of personal. Not that I don't trust you. If you can't trust randos you met online and invited to your house, who can you trust, right? Feel that way, too. You've also felt the overwhelming urge to throw yourself into the arms of strangers since you crash landed down here. He tells Ebony that you aren't going to judge him. You don't judge your friends. An overwhelming look of trembling gratitude comes over him. Once again, you feel an uncomfortable pulse of empathy. You aren't sure... You, uh, you are... You are used to being the desperate one. You aren't sure how you feel about this turnabout. All this social power. Okay. Two of you scroll down through the history of his GrubTube account, and you find yourself choked up by the incredible trust he is showing in you right now, like someone behind the curtain. There doesn't really seem to be anything worth getting stressed over. No porn or anything. He does have a lot of videos on Sirva, specifically ones where they are actually on camera. Oh yeah, they're so cool. It's so rad that you guys are tight. I really want to meet them someday. He sighs. And he sighs again, a little louder. You catch on, you catch on to your part in this bit, and tell him you can probably figure out a way to make it, that happen. You hope you don't have to follow through on that. Sarva is a busy guy, and you aren't sure they actually let anyone into their hive. Well, besides you, but you seem to be the exception of, to a number of rules. You keep that last part to yourself. Most of the videos in his recent history are. About a band called Hatch to Dance. Music videos, interviews, and compilations of blogs. Blogs. You ask him what, what all of this is. You've never heard of H2D? Really? They're so cool, they're my fave. I mean, he gets shifty eyed. I mean, whatever, they're alright, I guess. <laughs> Their music is kind of catchy and they have a pretty dope group dynamic. You mentioned that all. Them seem to be pretty good looking too. Haha, <laughs> really? You think so? Point out a guy with tall horns that swoosh into hooks. Hooks. And a lot of white hair that falls into his eyes. This guy is particularly handsome. Him? I mean, he's okay, I guess. If you're pretty basic. If you're really basic. Not that I think you're basic or anything. He shows you some of his music. He shows you some of the music videos. They have really high production values and extremely elaborate sets. All the band members sing and dance and get very close to kitchen, kissing each other. He'd been really nervous about showing you this. His deep, dark secret was that he likes music videos? Is being into pretty pop stars some kind of cultural taboo? Uh, not really, just... <laughs> it's kind of lame, right? And I just really want you to like me. And that's pretty obvious. And you do like him. You just wish he wouldn't say shit like that. It's embarrassing. And also, it reminds you that you yourself have gone around doing pretty much the same thing. Pretending to agree with it. Everything your prospective friends say. Lying. Saying you're into things you aren't. Just all around being a big phony. Circumstances are different for you, though. You're an alien. This is hostile territory. You don't have hive or lucis or even horns. So it's way less it's way less pathetic for you to be like this than it is for Zebedee, right? Deep down you know you're full of shit. You're just coming up with reasons to excuse behavior in yourself that you condemn in others. You hang your head in shame. Zebedee, who is not privy to your internal monologue, looks confused. Is it possible that you're doing the wrong thing? In your internal quest for friends? Could it be that, before you can file any further into a full-blown existential crisis, you hear a noise from outside that you really, really don't like? Several noises, in fact. 
crash, followed by a thump. Followed by a get out of here, you fucking piece of shit, you thief. Oh dear. Zebedee scrambles around to look over the back of the couch. You can just make out a shape through the window. Hey, it, this is a totally wild question that I would typically never would never ask a potential friend, but did you steal steal that scuttle buggy? Ha <laughs> ha funny story. You didn't know how else to get out here. You did it for him, for your nascent nascent friendship. Oh wow, nobody's ever stolen a skull buggy from me before. Haha. <laughs> did you forget to take the GPS chip out though? Because I think whoever you stole it from found it. Oop. GPS chip. Right. Fuck. This is not an auspicious. This is not an auspicious start to your life of crime. Maybe you aren't quite ready to get to go with it alone yet. Another crash and rattle. Sounds like someone is taking pieces out of Zebedee's hive. You get up and start for the door. Hey, um, what are you doing? You can't go out there. They look big. And they sound huge. You'll get killed. Right. He's definitely got a point there. But whoever is outside seems intent on demolishing his hive brick by brick. So they're gonna get in eventually anyway. Where for you to go out there now and face the music so at least one of you gets out of this. Zebedee so stares at you. Weird globby golden tears pull at the corners of his eyes. You, you would do that for me. Nobody's ever offered to die for me before. That's so nice. Yeah, yeah, you're pretty nice. Also pretty idiotic, considering you're about to go give yourself up to a big angry troll whose car you absolutely stole. Well, it's been fun. It's been fun while it lasted. Actually, it's been mostly terrible. Oh well. Goodbye, cruel world. Wait. You have one hand on the doorknob when Zebedee's shout rings against the walls and ceiling. No one is touching my new friend. Outside, the buzzing rises to a rattling crescendo. So loud that it no longer sounds like animals. It just sounds like weather. Or a fighter jet. The intruder screams. You wince. But you are also overwhelmed by gratitude and excitement. Zebedee did that for you. Screams stop after a few seconds. And the buzz buzzing gradually recedes. You and Zebedee are left staring at the door. Then at each other. Behind you, Grubtube is out of playing an H2D interview. Little ambient crack goals of the white electricity you've come to associate with sidekicks freeze Zebedee for that pigs too. Do you seriously telekinetically gather up a bunch of bees and just throw them? Um, no. That sounds hard and potentially dangerous for the bees. I more just ask them nicely. I'm bad at it though. Sometimes it doesn't work. Not sure it worked this time. Yeah. Zebedee nods, and he nods again. Yeah, that was pretty cool, right? Two of you venture outside to see what's going on. Nothing is going on. The night is quiet. The car is exactly where you left it, and there's no sign of the bees or the intruders. So either the railway got sunk so many times they dissolved into sludge. Feel another pang of conscience. But it's not enough to cover up your ecstatic surge of happiness when you see how chuffed Zebedee is to have sent some bees on a guy. You tell him you're grateful. You think about adding that you're proud to him, but you don't want to literally make him explode. You let him hug you instead. Guess this means you have a skull buggy now? Yeah, spoils of war. You want some buttery exploded kernels? I make them myself. Well, I put the kernels in a pot and explode them. Tell him that sounds great. He's honestly pretty fun to visit. Minus the sudden attack, you're having a pretty nice time. And that part was honestly entirely your fault. He should quit putting himself down so much and being such a desperate piece of shit. He meant that in the nicest way possible. And it's pretty good advice in general. You know, just to have floating around out there. Finally, we can be friends. It's answer. Might as well. You have no idea how long Zebedee's going to be in there. And if there's any one with music, it's this troll. Hey, dude. What's up? Can't believe it took you this long to get a chitter, Lama. Damn, you're 
you're like really lost without my help, huh? Looks like you only got two followers though, Momo. You can feel some nameless tension in your bleeding and you bleed away in the into the thump of the lo fi chill hot beats murmuring softly through Sirva's mic. If only you could just go spend time with your cool friends and stop making new ones. But even th but even the thought makes your stomach wring itself out like a washcloth. There's no point wishing for things to be different from how they are. You'd do anything for new friends. Anything. You ask them if they have any cheddar advice. You know, on how to be a cool guy online. I mean, you definitely came to the right troll. But I don't know if I should be ma like managing your brand more than I already did. It's just risky for me, you know? It's hard enough maintaining my image as is. Other streamers always on my bulge, Flamo. Doesn't mean we can't hang, though. I mean, it was literally chill last It was really chill last time. Also, I need my clothes back. Sure, Sarah, that you still definitely have their clothes, that, and that you totally did not destroy them in an epic battle to save a giant collie. That's cool, no wor worries or anything. I was wondering if you wanted to hang out today. If not, it's chill. I got all sorts of shit I can get up to, Lamo. You know how it is. But yeah, let me know. Oh, wow. How did you suddenly get s become so popular? Maybe this is what happens when you finally get online. Get online. Not only are you hanging out with one friend, you've got another clamoring for your attention. Social media is amazing. You tell Survivor you would love to chill, but you're currently in the out in the middle of nowhere hanging out with someone else. Maybe Survivor has heard of him? Zebedee Tongiva. Surely everybody on the internet knows each other. Um, I don't know him. Sorry, well. Spell out Zebedee's chitter handle. Servo's face does a complicated dance between shock, worry, and wry amusement. Oh dang, uh, where are the odds? Small internet. So Servo does know him. I mean, I know of him. Man, awkward. Are you guys tight though? Tell Servo that you aren't tight yet. Pretty loose, but you're working on it, which is why you're currently in the middle of nowhere sitting on this B-themed couch. Servo scratches awkwardly between their horns. Is that like? what you go online to do that whole scene scene the only scene you know about is the friendship scene and possibly the clown scene and the meat scene actually you may be in more scenes than you give yourself credit for and you get the feeling you are right on the edge of another one you can taste it, it makes your stomach growl tell Zerva whatever the scene is you're definitely you're definitely not part of it you don't even know what they're talking about so what are they talking about? Not to, to like, talk shit or whatever. Because God knows golds who live in a glass hive of tenuously curated online social interaction shouldn't throw stones or whatever. Fuck knows I, I got up to some shit back in the day. But you maybe shouldn't hang out with this dude. Especially when you're, like, right on the edge of breaking out yourself. I mean, you have to be careful with this shit. I told you what happens to me. I told you what happened to me. Internet fame isn't a joke. Gesture vaguely toward their missing eye. Here, let me just link you. Link pops up on, in the gripe chat box. You follow it to what appears to be a fan fiction account. Nothing wrong with a little fan fiction. You've never been much of a writer yourself, but you're pretty pro. Anybody doing whatever they feel like, as long as it's not gruesome murder. You're really, you're a real chill dude that way. I mean, right. I mean, right, yeah, same. Uh, I'm not trying to judge or whatever. You'll see what I mean. Scroll down. Scroll past the first few pages. Most of these seem to be about a band you've never heard of. And then, almost at the end, you find... Oh. Oh. Oh, damn. This appears to be a fanfic about Sirva. You don't click the through. You get the you kind of get the idea from the tags. Well, Sirva is a big deal after all. You guess it makes sense that people include them in their uh, fantasies. You do it all the time in a friendship way. Yeah, you get what I'm saying now, though. I mean, live your dreams, right, Lamo? Any guy on the internet can write whatever he wants about me, but like, I don't want to see it. 
just adds up, you know. You get how that can be a little awkward. He tells Erva that you will be careful of your infant internet fame. Though you doubt anyone will ever write anything about you. Who'd want to read about your dumb fuck exploits? Yeah, Lamo. Come over whenever I'll smoke you up. Great. More bug ass. You had your call with Serva. Navigate back over to Ze Zebedee's fanfiction account. Pick one of the ones not about Serva. One of the teen rated ones. <coughs> you don't have anything against Erotica, but uh, maybe you'll save it for later. You don't know any of these characters. And the context is doubtably indecipherable. The troll music business. But if this really is Zebedee's writing, Lola, he's pretty good. You have such talented friends. Hey, sorry I took so long. Shit, Zebedee sneak sneaks up on you from behind. You quickly lock your phone, but apparently not quickly enough. You, how did you find this? Oh god, you went searching for me? There's, I thought we were friends. What? Of course you're friends. Friends don't go digging through each other's shit. I would have showed you my fic if you just asked. You tell them that you absolutely did not go looking for it. Serva gave it to you when they called you up just now. Ze Zebedee's face closes down. Is it just you or has the sound of the beast gotten louder? Oh, right. They're a cool friend, Ser Serva told you. I see how it is. No, they just called you. You just answered the phone. No, it's fine. I totally get it. <laughs> Even coming all the way out here, I'm still not a priority. It's fine. It's not even a big deal. I'm totally used to it. You and Serva. Where are you, mate spritz? You are absolutely not mate spritz with Serva. You are not sp mate spritz with anyone, as far as you know. Fine. Having so many friends is exhausting. Oh, really? Like, your life is so great, I get it. You have just so many friends and you're, popular, and you're so popular and everyone wants to spend time with you. Zebedee is crying and trying not to hide, and trying not to, and not trying to hide it. It's very sad, and extremely awkward. You feel terrible. Also, like kind of a dickhead. You're always doing all this complaining about your lot in life. When, to tell the truth, you've actually got a lot going for you. You have all these amazing friends who go out of their way to check up on you and ask if you want to hang out. Of course, all the. All that complaining is just in your internal monologue. It's not like anyone can hear your thoughts. Thank God for that. Well, I'm so glad that you and Serva have each other. Maybe you can go and hang out with them and make fun of me some more. Try and tell Zebedee that you were you were absolutely not making fun of him. You were just curious about his hobbies and interests. You absolutely want to read this fan fiction, but the kid isn't listening anymore. In fact, I hope the car has enough gas to get you back to civilization. Awkward. Well, that will be all for this time on Hive Swap Friends Sim. If you liked the video, like it. If you want to see more of my content, subscribe. And yeah, have a good day and do what you do best.